What's up guys, Max here. Today we're gonna to be reacting to a CNBC video where the reporters decide to go on to the Navy's ship, the LCS, the biggest waste of money since they decided to remake their uniforms back in 2008. It's a disaster, these LCSs, they're being decommissioned left and right. The Navy's saying, what is wrong with these ships? CNBC decided to go on board and take a look. Before we get started, make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss lots of great content like this. Pick up your Midrat shirt at the link in the description down below, scuttlebuttshow.com, and let's go ahead and pop over and start reacting to this video. Today, Ooh, after we hours. take you on a tour of the Navy's most controversial warship. All right, they got her going on the ship Welcome after hours. CNBC after hours, I'm Mackenzie Segal. Mackenzie with right all those bat, sailors. Let's get you caught up on the markets. Man, we got to skip ahead to the part with the actual ship. Okay, so one big goal for the U.S. Navy is to have 355 ships in its fleet by the end of the decade. Now, of course. There's 365 now. That's why we have a bunch of buds duds out there burning down ships left and right, constantly setting fires that we don't know how to put out so that they can get that ship count down to 355. It's a weird tactic, I know, but the Navy likes to do things a little bit backwards. Part of that plan includes building new ships, but it also includes salvaging older ships in the fleet and keeping them running for longer than originally planned. That doesn't seem to be the case for the Navy's littoral combat ships, though. Two have already been decommissioned in recent months after less than 15 like so we got Coronado in the background right there, and they're talking about the decommission of these LCSs because they just don't work. I mean, the Navy bought, you know, however many of these ships for however many billions of dollars, and, and frankly, they just don't work. They're a disaster. They can't get off out of the pier. They can't get, you know, unmoored out of the pier and out to sea. They can't get underway. Years in service due to high maintenance costs. They were meant to last for closer to 30. CMC.com's Brad Howard took a tour of one of these LCS ships and can show us around. I'm Brad Howard with CNBC, and for CNBC After Hours, I'll be going aboard the littoral Com. So you got sailors on the on the flight deck there where the helos land. Their different colored shirts mean different things. You got green shirts, which are part of the aviation squadron, and then the yellow shirt there is another signalman who's probably a landing signalman enlisted, and they're helping the uh, they're helping the ship take off. So the white actually the white shirt's probably a QA or a, a safety, and then the yellow shirt's the landing signalman enlisted who is you know giving the hand signals to help to help the helicopter land and take off. It's a big responsibility. That ship. It's one of the Navy's multi-million dollar warships, and we're getting an inside look. The USS Milwaukee, a Freedom Class LCS, is training off the coast of Florida, which means getting there requires a one-hour helicopter ride. The LCS is capable of handling a variety of helicopters on its flight deck, including uncrewed helicopters. Hilo, away, starboard side. Behind me is a fire scout. The M. The Fire Scout, he said uncrewed, but you might know it as a drone. The Fire Scout's an unmanned helicopter used to perform a variety of operations off of ships like an LCS small deck ships. Q8C Fire Scout is an uncrewed helicopter that is as big as a normal helicopter. It can help the crew by providing surveillance over the horizon among other uses. The LCS isn't a giant warship. It seems like every inch is dedicated to a purpose. The galley where the crew eats is utilitarian, but it provides an area for the crew <laughs> Look at that purple shirt or, uh, you know, on the on the purple shirt, they're in charge of gas, fuel and stuff. Look at her looking. She's like, get off my ship. They, they've never, they're like, we never have cameras on these ships. Get out of here. We're not interested in having you come film us. Uh, careful, Brad. Careful. You're in the you're in the galley now. You're on that galley level. You're about to get eaten, eaten up, Brad. Crew to unwind during the weeks or even months at sea. And the rear of the ship has a hold capable of being loaded with Connex boxes, among other types of equipment, which can be particularly useful during humanitarian operations. The last LCS. I don't know if he thinks everyone knows what Connex boxes are, but they're basically large metal shipping containers that we use for all things from shipping to offices to living in. I lived in a Connex box in Afghanistan for six months. It was actually really nice was ordered in fiscal year 2019, and the average cost of the last five LCSs ordered was about $983 million. There you go, billion bucks. 23 ships have been... Can I get some of that? Can I get some of that money? What do you guys need a billion bucks for? Commissioned in nine ships are currently under construction or in pre-construction. So I'm here on the bridge of the USS Milwaukee. What's notable about it is the combination of training and new technology allows for the crew on this bridge to be much smaller than previous frigate designs. So we come to these ships um, prepared to, um, you know, face anything that is thrown at us. We're Are you, though? Are you prepared to face anything that's thrown at you? Because your coveralls look unserviceable, sir. LT, those coveralls have seen better days. Can we get this guy a new pair of coveralls? They look like denim. They got, they're all worn down around the seams. 
This guy's a surface warfare officer. Those coveralls look like he was maybe prior enlisted and he got those in like 1983. Come on, man. Come on. Mask doesn't even look nice. Like nothing on this guy looks nice. We got to get him hooked up with a new uniform. Can we get a fun started for maybe get the, get the LT some new coveralls on here? And this is on TV day. On the day that the reporters are coming, you couldn't get your nice coveralls out with the with the lines pressed into them because you know some real Joe Navy out there, some Seaman Schmuckatellis out there with the with the lines with the military creases pressed into their coveralls, and this guy couldn't get nothing like that. And plus, he's on the ship; somebody's doing his laundry for him. He couldn't get somebody to put a nice uniform together. I don't believe it. With the three people that we have on the bridge, vice other ships that could have anywhere 12, 14, 15 people. The LCS is equipped with a rigid hull inflatable boat, or RIB. These boats are also useful for search and rescue, counter piracy, and also for certain sorts of maritime inspection. The crew of the Milwaukee took me on an exercise where the RIB would be launched from the LCS in order to send sailors to board another vessel. But a so they call that VBSS, Visit, Board, Search, and Seizure, and those guys get to do a pretty cool job. Normally, they're just sailors who have regular jobs on the ship. You might find a lot of bosun's mates on there, people in charge of the anchor and painting the ship gray and all that good stuff, and they get to go out there and actually carry weapons and hopefully not accidentally shoot anybody, and they can go out there and check other ships and see what kind of cargo they're carrying, make sure that they're in the right waters at the right time, that they're not up to no good. It's a pretty cool gig on a ship. The critical hose malfunction, which prevented the doors from opening. Shut it down! Shut up, MBU! The crew quickly and safely fixed the hose, communicating loudly through each step of the process. I got a on! I got a After the rib was launched, the sailors performed a boarding exercise supported by a helicopter from the LCS. One of the main advantages a ship like the LCS brings to the fleet is capabilities such as this sort of interdiction. The small boat and aerial support the LCS can bring to bear is also useful in humanitarian situations, such as when Haiti experienced an earthquake in August of this year. Uh, USS Billings is one of the first ones on scene, so you have an LCS on scene with their helicopter providing humanitarian relief. At the I'm going to be honest, that guy didn't just exude leadership to me with that hairline right there. Can we go back to that hairline really quick? I mean, I don't want to make this a superficial thing, but I don't know. This guy's my skipper. That swole up there with his faded coveralls saying they're ready for anything. Do you guys think that this ship is ready for anything, or do you think this next one to be decommissioned for maintenance issues? You guys let me know in the comments down below. They're providing humanitarian relief. That's At probably a nice the day, guy. the LCS is a, nice is a Navy warship, and it's designed to engage with the enemy. The LCS has a 57 millimeter main gun. The primary purpose is the uh, anti-surface warfare can be used against uh, anti- So here's what's great, Joe. Joe over here is a fire controlman, senior chief petty officer, an E-8 in the United States Navy. Everyone thinks fire controlmen mean they're firefighters, but those are damage controlmen. Fire controlmen make sure that the weapons on the system are ready to go at all times, firing big caliber rounds and rockets at the enemy or any incoming threat. It's actually a cool job. Shout out to the FCs out there. That air warfare as well. Uh, you don't expect a gun uh, this big to shoot that fast, uh, but when it starts pummeling out rounds, it, uh, it's definitely uh, impressive to watch. Look at those Freedom shells. Class. Look at those shells. They're like baseball bats. The ships in operation are also awaiting an upgrade that will place the naval strike missile on board, nice. which will be a huge upgrade in the ship's ability to fight other warships, something that the Pentagon wants in an era of strategic competition. So, you know, they say if there's a big peer to peer conflict like the United States versus Russia or China or something like that, this is going to be a massive amount of battles at sea that we're going to be looking at. So the United States Navy being prepared with weapons like that, including long range attack weapons and countermeasures is critical to the success of those types of missions. If we do ever find ourselves in there, hopefully we never do. But if we do, the Navy's going to be up to bat, so to speak, when it comes to these uh managing sea power and our ability to maneuver and control the seas, which is the mission of the Navy. Uh, with that missile, there's many other lethality upgrades that the LCS are getting, which I cannot talk about right now. But again, you're taking a lethal, stealthy ship who's able to go fast in the littorals and making it much more deadlier. You know that guy goes to the bar and talks about it on a regular basis. You know he's out there. That guy goes out and gets some cocktails, you know, some apple teenies, and he's like, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but... We're getting the rail gun. I know you said, I know they said it was canceled, but we actually have four rail guns on the ship and they're firing nuclear titanium tungsten depleted plutonium rods. So, and, uh, and we also can fire them down from space. You think that the Navy's not working with the space force? Think again, waiter, another apple teeny, please. That's what, uh, that's the vibe that that commander's given me. As I left the USS Milwaukee, it seemed to me that after a rocky 20 year development, the Navy may not have the ship it set out to build back in 2002, but it does have a very capable small warship. 
and the lessons learned from it will likely be part of future Navy ship designs for years to come. I'm sure that that crew was really enjoying escorting this guy around while he's taking selfies with his cell phone or whatever, walking in and out of the helo. Uh, good for the Navy putting up with the reporters going out there trying to do their job and, you know, report to the people why their billion dollars in tax dollars are being wasted on LCSs, which are breaking down left and right. There's reports in Congress and throughout the Navy all the time of this stuff that's going on with these LCSs. So, I don't know, it's kind of a train wreck. Thank you guys for joining me today at Fob Scuttlebutt. Before we go, make sure you're subscribed with those notifications on so you don't miss great videos like this which come out literally all the time, constantly. So I'll talk to you next time. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And for now, that's the Scuttlebutt. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner here and check out this next video. If you want, in the description down below, there's links where you can get Scuttlebutt Show merch and find out how you can support the channel. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to talking to you guys very soon.